One of the things that Buick's always worked with best is the idea of room. The amount of room for families and things, and the kind of room for luxury. Now this Buick LeSabre not only has room for six people, it's also a, well, it's a heck of a nice place for them to be. Frankly, Buick thinks that with that much comfort and that much luxury, the LeSabre, dollar for dollar, might be their very best value. I wouldn't argue with that. Don't worry. I'll fix you right up. You better believe it. The following program is rated TV MAL. It contains strong language and is intended only for mature audiences. Viewer discretion advised. You haven't guessed by now we got a 68 Buick LeSabre you know the poor man's Electra but it is above the Oldsmobile and puts Pontiac to shame and definitely makes Chevy look like a fucking ghetto bastard never had a Buick before so I'm popping my Buick cherry to this video montage from what I was told the original motor you know Buick 350 this car only had that one version but two different styles 9 to 1 compression 10 to 1 compression if you want a 430 you get a Wildcat or, now 455 didn't come out till 1970, I think. Either way, the original motor threw a fucking rod. Sent that to the moon. So they yanked that out, put another Buick motor out of a 72 Buick, I believe. Did some work on it on the stand. Dropped it in. And at some point, that developed a head gas leak. Externally, where it's dripping on the ground outside the block. And the last owner lost motivation to continue and just wanted to sell it and just move on to something else. And that's, one of, that's basically that type of situation. And that happens all the time in the automotive world where basically a guy with good intentions wants to work on a car he just loses the motivation just wants it gone to do something else and that's what happened with this car I came by and I'm like fuck I got three hundred dollars you know shit I spent more on shittier things you've seen Uncle Buck you've seen that Mercury I spent fifteen hundred on that fucking turd this one I got good I got good vibes with it's been a while since I fucked with a GM car anyway so and I never thought I'd ever have a four-door hardtop. I've kind of always looked down on those cars. That was like a good B-pillar. But this one, I, I like that. They call it the Coke bottle design. It's 6768, you know. Looks very, very sporty. I kind of like it. The more I look at it, the more I like it. I got ideas with this guy. And it's not without it comes with, a, you know, accessories. It's got a shit ton of parts. A spare rear bumper, rear quarter skins, because, as you know, they're kind of rotten. 
Not sure if I want to fix it. Kind of like the righty look, but it's got a bunch of spare parts. Like I just threw it in there. Oh yeah, we got some rust right there. The fucking dog leg is chewed up. That's all gone. Yeah, the frame is still good, but you know, it's, I didn't say this was going to be easy. It's definitely going to be a challenge, but I'm used to that. You know, more fucking parts. The interior is not that bad. Oh yeah, look at this is just a lap of luxury right here, even though the seat's kind of chewed up. Now, interesting to know, this thing does not have power windows, which is odd. Although it's got the smoker windows, they do work. You know, kind of like that. You know, if I want to start smoking again, these are the windows to do it for. You know, one of the quirky things about driving a four-door hardtop, pretend you're a family guy, you're cruising the kids on the, the you know, Wally world, and they're acting unruly as fuck in the back seat, and you don't want to pull over and tell them to shut the fuck up. You just keep on driving, lower the rear window, and you just fucking unleash all the parenting on their asses. You don't have to stop or nothing. You just keep on going and keep up with your schedule. You can't do that in a B-pillar. It'll fucking block it. You can just lower it on the window and put the fear of God in those little bastards. Kind of a morbid way to describe a Ford or hardtop, but it, you can do it in one of these cars. Anywho, it's got all the peripherals as a upper class luxury car's got lights, wipers, washers, fan, temperature, defrost, selector, radio. 68, I'm assuming it's just AM. Other than that, it's got the padded dash. Gauge reads full, which I know is fuck all because, well, one, the gas tank's loaded in the trunk because they took it out. See, it's held up pretty good. It's only just kind of cloth. Headliner's got a couple tears into it. But I like it. I can just sew it back up. Door corners are mainly okay. It's, it's chewed up, but it's not so bad where you can't un unfix it, you know. Because it's a 68, there's no latch for the hood. That's all access 24-7 on the front side. I don't know what year they started doing that, but it wasn't in this year. The latch here is for the e-brake. They had that much going on. Telescopic steering? No fucking way. It's just straight. Don't fucking move. In dash key? You damn right. They don't know. Hang in the column. Oh yeah, it's got all the goodies. You know, and I'm six foot, six foot one give or take. It's got pretty good leg room, actually. Oh, yeah, I can, I can get used to this. Well, with the little gas I got in that boat tank, probably half a gallon, just enough to roll this cripple back in the garage and let's start fixing on this damn thing. I'm going to start chipping away at this tree I'll call the Buick and make it a runner. We'll live, breathe, jump, and fucking backflip one more time. I can guarantee it. Just can't say when, but it's going to. First step is get into the surgery room and start hacking, slicing, dicing, resealing, fueling, fucking, and drinking. Let's do it. See how much fight the brakes uh, fight this thing. Some of them are locked up. Oh, by the way, it's got straight pipe true dual exhaust, so it's already made for me. That's the only exhaust that I ever know. Come on. I don't even have a fucking bottle to celebrate or anything of the matter, so I'm a little underprepared. It runs, runs as good as a car's got with a bad head gasket. I can usually hear it sizzle like, like every 
five to seven seconds, you hear a drip, drip, drip on the header, on the manifolds. You know, tss, 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 so you know it's leaking. Although it's not coughing up much white smoke, so maybe the cylinders ain't compromised, which is good, hopefully. Oh man, I left a fucking diarrhea streak on the road here, on the uh, pavement. Oh, a little bit of coolant. Yeah, those wheels are fucking, those brakes are not happy, and they're all drums, which is not my favorite fucking thing in the world, but for $300, I guess I can't complain too much, but he's in there, and we're going to start fucking hacking and dicing. Let's get to it. I'm going to get me a bottle first, and then I'll get to it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Hold on to your lug nuts, it's time for an overhaul! Why are you gay? Who says I'm gay? You are gay. So, not looking good. No oil pressure. I'll around for about 20 seconds, give or take. Nothing on top. Not even a fucking fart out of the damn block. Where the oil pressure gauge bolts into the side of it. Nothing. Not a single fucking thing. So, I got some inclination of what could be going on. I got a couple of theories. I hadn't ran it for, ran it for about 20 seconds. Oil pressure. Not a single fucking thing. Not even a trickle in the line. Nothing coming on top, underneath the bell cover. It's not making a knocking or a pinging noise, which is a good thing. It's just that it's like it's not even engaged. Because all I know is even a whipped, Uncle Buck-like motor, high mileage, pissed out, even broken, even they sling oil, even, even in the slightest. This has got nothing. I even screwed the, uh, where it plugs in the block. This is a bare open hole, like a freshly fucked asshole. Not even a fart. Not even a lick of oil coming out of it. So I don't think that old pump is engaged. Either the distributor is just not spinning it, or maybe it needs to be primed. Sometimes oil pumps have to be primed if they've been sitting for a while. And from what I've told, this car sat for a couple of years. So we're going to get one of the getting's good. I'm going to take the distributor out. Take a couple of pictures just so I know how it's positioned. Because it did ran. I got running on. A, I got running on a command. So that does verify the fuel pump works. So we got that. And we're going to basically you know, make sure I got a document where the distributor was originally. Pull it out. And see what the fuck's going on down there. I also got... Wooden dowel. You know, circumcise it. Circumcise it again into a point. We're going to fucking manually spin this bitch over. Got a little bit of oil with me somewhere. I'm gonna, you know, dump it down a stove hole. Both the catches in the gears. And I'll start you know, the priming process if that's what it fucking needs. Even with a motor with fucked up bearings, ones that make noise too, it'd still have oil pressure, especially when it's cold. It ain't doing none of that, so it's suspicious. It sure is fucking suspicious. Go the other way. Normally, if it picks up oil, you'd feel resistance. I've done this before with the Cadillac, so we're gonna have to do another thing. You know, out of curiosity, I checked the filter and it was bone dry, so I filled that up and repeated the process and still nothing. I guess the only option left is to drop the pump and fill full of petroleum jelly and prime it that way. Well, at least it's an external pump. Yeah, that looks about right. Just wiped off the excess. It's all just fucking pressed all in there. See if that does it. Give it some shit, put in some bolts, and hope for the best. Alright, starter up.
She's a squirter. She's a squirting. Where'd that come from? Oh yeah, I forgot that fucking hose on the bottom. Let's hit the fan and just kicked it around. Thermostat must have opened up. Well, you saw it before she squirted. There's a 40 something 50 psi oil. Fucking A, can't beat that. Just had to pre prime the fucking uh, oil pump. bringing an old car of a junker that's it literally a skid road to cut us out in between opportunities. Duke's gonna have his time to shine like a buck is. It's a nice day. This will be the parts when some carry the old ones. Eventually the Duke's gonna be the C car, D car, whatever alphabet car is gonna be. It's actually the fleet of bastard cars, that's all she is. <sighs> Romeo built in a day, if you haven't noticed, this takes time. It takes time to chop down a big sequoia tree of this Buick. But I'll eventually win, eventually follow my direction. And while we're doing it, we can do it in style. Give the oils a break, let the Uncle Buck do the work for a little while, then the Buick will eventually start filling in for the other cars and rotate that fucking fleet. But let's get to it, we got more work to be done on that motor. We'll get a model later, a little bit later. I want to do the silver at least for, for now. Let's get to it. been a real close family but lately some of my kin folks have disowned a few others and me I guess it's because I kind of changed my direction Lord I guess I went and broke their family tradition they get on me one
we figured it out. It wasn't an exotic problem like a cracked block or cracked head or anything of the sort. So this is how I found it. We're watching it in real time with you people. See that's where the you know perceived leak is. There you go. Simple human error. The guy just put it in backwards. It's an it's an honest mistake. You know, I don't I ain't gonna judge. I've made millions of mistakes with cars, so shit happens. At least it's an easy explanation. And fell pro gaskets, which is what this is, are pretty forgiving, you know, for stock builds. We ain't racing this damn thing. I'm gonna do I'm gonna do everything back one of us one side at a time. Put the gasket on, torque it down, take the other side off, repeat the process. It'll be even more gentle that way. Everything looks clean, cylinders look good. Took pictures of that and everything. You never know. Might need to do some research later on if something happens. These are blueprinted motors, in case you didn't know, so each piston mode should have its own letter designated next to each cylinder. My Cadillac had that. So I took pictures in case I need to know whatever down the road, just for reference, gotta archive shit. So everything's been cleaned off, got the gasket, it says up, that goes up, and then we should be good and fancy. Put that on there, have a couple of drinks, do the other side, repeat the process, fire it right back up and hope it don't leak. It shouldn't now that we know what was going on. How do you spell relief? I get the arguing K. Lately, Dave says my baby left me. I do it almost every day. It's the only thing that I found that'll take the hurt away. But how do you spell relief, John? I get the arguing K. Well, every night about sundown, I get a pain down deep inside. This old broken heart acts up, there's a hurting in my pride. But I've found a surefire treatment that'll get me feeling right. When your memory starts flaring up, I just head for the neon lights. How do you spell relief, David? Get D R U N K. Lately, since my baby left, I do it almost every day. It's the only thing that I found, John, that'll take the hurt away. Well, how do you spell relief? I just get. And it lasts me all night long It's the perfect medication For an ailment such as mine I forget about the tears I've cried When the whiskey hits my mind How do we spell relief? We get D-R-U-N-K Lately since my baby left me I do it almost every day Where I tell you, Johnny, it's the only thing I've found that will Take the pain away. How do we spell relief? We get D R U N K. How do we spell relief? We get D R U N K. How do we spell relief? We get D R U N K. We're having fun now, ain't we? Now, for the sake of conveniency, I'm gonna do everything in the snap of a finger. Done. And I got booze. Top end looks pretty good. You got the carburetor readjusted, intake, heads, exhaust, everything from the shoulders up. Redone. So let's see what this thing fucking says. I'm a little loaded, and so the motor will be pretty soon. Okay. So, moment of truth. Got everything on the top end replaced. Head gaskets, intakes, exhaust gaskets, all that shit. Fucking dialed in. Redialed on the carburetor, you know, fiddle fucked with it, so I think it's gonna run better. You know, had to reprime the oil pump, or you know, 
yeah, oil pump just because you know, old, old fucking cars are a little gremlin shit, but that's all dialed in. I basically got this motor soup, you know, souped up enough where it could run for 10 minutes. That's basically what I want out of this fucking heap. Just to hear what this thing talks for about 10 to 15 minutes. It's got enough coolant, got enough oil, all the gaskets are replaced, carburetor is dialed in, that's timed. I got zip ties on the fan blade, so that's like a makeshift belt just to keep the water flowing. So I, I did it just enough to get this fucking motor to sing like a church choir for at least 10 to 15 minutes. Let's see what this old Beal can do. Let's see if my head job to be able to be fruitful on this. And I got the valve cover off because I want to see how much oil is going to be coming out of these fucking um, push rods. I did clean out their pee holes, so hopefully they'll be jizzing all this fender oil pretty good and healthy. So let's see what this fucking thing can do now. Gaskets are holding up, temperature is stable, good oil pressure. A little bit buzzed, you look happy, it's a win win. You let it run for a little bit while longer, around 190 degrees. You know, get its fat ass up and run and make it relevant. So, this is rehab for the Buick. Let me tell you, it sounded pretty damn good. This is all Buick power. I like it, I like the way she sounds. Fucker sounds like a church choir just fucking sings. They're playing the organs. 